Corson coming off a successful, somewhat, uh, dual meet against the Huskies. Cougar men won. Cougar women came close, not quite having it happen. Tell yeah. me a little bit about how this dual meet prepared your team for the rest of the championship season. Um, it, it All of the meets prepare us for the championship season. Uh, the Husky dual meet is a special competition to us, and I think everybody competes at a little bit higher level in that meet. Um, and we did again this weekend. It kind of gets your competitiveness going. Um, not that it's not there during the rest of the season, but in a scored competition, and the rest of our meets are scored competitions. The first round competition is not scored NCAA, but everything else is scored, so it's important. Some notable performances. Um, let's start with the men's side on Saturday. Um, well, I, I think Oliver Henry did a real nice job getting us a couple second places uh, in the shot put and in the disc. Um, Joe Bartlett always does a great job uh, in this meet, and he's a team guy that's willing to do whatever it takes. He had, I think it was probably a, over a 20-foot PR in the hammer throw and almost pulled off the third place but uh, still came back and threw well in the shot and the disc and uh, was a valuable member of our scoring in that meet. Um, our pole vaulters did a good job. Jake Bartline probably um, turned the meet around. It was, I mean, going, it was really close and uh, we had kind of on a dope sheet, we're looking at a third place there and wound up with a first place and that's a four point swing plus minus. And uh, th that was great for Jake to jump 17 feet the first time in the meet of that nature and, uh, and as our team captain really kickstart our team effort and get us going. And uh, so that was really good. Um, Stephen Scott Ellis uh, had a busy day and uh, did a good job with the first in the long jump, his first 25-foot jump outdoors, and then um, got second in the triple jump because he had run to 200 and uh, didn't have a whole lot left after that. Uh, we kind of thought that his mark might hold up in the, in the triple jump, but uh, Cason Covington did a great job and competed well in his final attempt, got by him, or he actually jumped the same distance. And since Stefan only had the one jump, he didn't have a mark to back it up, so wound up second. Um, on the men's team, um, Joe Abbott, we can always say, even though he was sick, uh, still performed well. And, and uh, Jacob Sealby is coming back now and starting to show the fitness and form that he showed in the indoor competitions. And so anxious to see where he goes in, in the, the final part of the season now. Um, I think the Huskies are kind of excited that Joshua Anderson wasn't here this year. Yeah. Yet, um, yet we went one through four in that men's 400 hurdles. <laughs> Great job there by everybody uh, to come through. Um, but, you know, that's kind of what we anticipated going into it. We had four people that were equal to or faster than their best guy. Uh, I think our men's uh, distance crew did well, especially the 3,000-meter uh, guys. Uh, we were at a point where we needed a sweep in order to not make it go to the relay. And I felt that we had a better relay, but you never know. Somebody can drop a stick or a lane violation or anything. So we needed that sweep, and, and all three of those guys performed well and, and got us the one, two, three. So for the men, very exciting day, um, great competition. Uh, Huskies gave us all we wanted, but we were, we were up to the task. Always good to win at home. Always good to win at home. A couple of highlights on the women's side. Let's start with the women's 4 by one relay. Well, uh, I think that's our sixth fastest time ever uh, for the relay. Uh, and it was, you know, there was some conservative passes. The idea was we were faster, so we just had to get the stick around and we would likely win the relay. And so the passes were a little bit conservative. And um, I, I think that the potential is there for us to go under 45 seconds at the conference meet. And there's only been three, time, uh, three teams in WSU history that have done that. So, and our coach uh, of the relays uh, was on the women's team that ran the school record 44.50. So I, I think that was a, a, a encouraged as a highlight for us, but also encouraging for the future. Um, 
women's pole vault, Kelsey Bueno uh, was a 12-foot um, jumper until this last weekend and, and moved all the way up to 12-10 and was looking great. And so hopefully she keeps that rolling now and has her confidence up. And uh, But uh, she's an outstanding pole vaulter, and, and we need her to be jumping over 13, over 4 meters. And I, I'm sure that she will. The, um, the shot and disc... Uh, Mary Barnett uh, winning the shot, getting third in the disc was really helpful for us. Jasmine Johnson, J McEwen second in the shot put, first in the discus. She was probably picked to be second based on these this season's marks. So I think they competed up very well and did a nice job there for us. Uh, I think our, right off the bat, our women's long jump, uh, they have a person with the seasonal best mark better than us, but we got first and third on them in the long jump. And I thought that might get our ball rolling and, and snowball. And uh, it just seemed like every time we, we'd get a little advantage and get up some points, uh, somewhere along the line, we'd find a way to give it back to them. And so we're kind of battling that all day long. And for us to win the meet on the women's side, we couldn't give any points back. We needed to, to stay on the, on the high side there and uh, just couldn't quite get it done. This weekend, we're going to start adding up some points towards the conference championships, the first Pac-12 right. championships. You're taking a couple athletes with you down to Eugene for this weekend's multi-events championships. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your heptathlete and your two decathlon? Uh, Shaquana Logan, uh, I think she was seventh or eighth? Seventh. Seventh last year in the heptathlon. And uh, we just kind of went into it cold last year and she performed very well. Shaquana is very competitive and a very good athlete as well. And so this year she's been working on, on the events uh, with Coach Richardson for a better part of the year. And uh, so we're going to go down and, and give it another try with the heptathlon for Shaquana. And I'm sure she'll do well. Um, her hurdles and her long jump are, are serving her very well right now. And uh, we'll see how the rest of it comes along. Uh, in the decathlon, Michael Boligar and Sean Harris will re represent the Cougs. And um, their first outing this year didn't go as we had hoped for, and, uh, but I think that their training has gone well, and I think they're at a point right now with, uh, with good rest and fresh legs, I think they're ready to do well, and, and I expect both of them to score. Do you like having this meet split up with the HEP and DEC a weekend prior to the rest of the championship week? Well, I always have, because our hope is that our... Hep and Deca, Shaquana will come back next week and she'll run the highs, the intermediates, and probably run on both relays. And uh, Michael will come back and, and high jump and, and long jump, and Sean will probably hurdle. So, but in years past, with the likes of uh, Diana and Julie Pickler and, and Eleni Richardson, those people, and even Whitney Evans, uh, NCAA high jump champion, those people did the multis and scored in, this, in, in the deck and the Hep and then came back and also did very well in the open competition. So I think that's the way it needs to be. If we combine the HEP deck with the regular meet, like some conferences do, then you minimize the use of those people. And if somebody suggests that, then I'll probably suggest that we just run the five and 10,000 meters back to back on the same day. And it's the same thing. Sure. So uh, I, I think we're in the right place. I think we're doing it the right way.